Welcome back everybody to the Real Estate Machine Show. I'm your host Chris Matan. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Uh, coming to you live at Modage Machine. Again, I'm actually in the, uh, the, the addition building which we built about four or five years ago to house a bunch of our uh, manual equipment. Uh, most importantly to make room on the other side for a couple of new CNC's which have um, uh, been very very good to us and uh, so good so good as much is that I want to uh, make a play at this place over here and uh, kind of tidy it up a little bit I've made a decision to clean up some of this old equipment and uh, put it on the market and sell it whether that's going to be uh, uh, that could be eBay Craigslist or uh, ultimately auction there's a um, We've got a handful of machines here. I'll just kind of like let you walk, let you follow me here. Got an engine lathe behind me here. And then uh, if you walk with me over here, up back there, back here we've got a Warner Swayze. You can see the uh, eh, Warner Swayze right there. Uh, you know, this thing is kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to follow me. But anyway, I wanted to, uh, wanted to give you guys an idea of the shop here. And um, you know, there's some pretty valuable real estate with uh, machines and equipment and some tooling that just hasn't been used in years and years and years. That um, you know, I feel like if I open up this space, clean it out, then the uh, the vision will be able to expand and uh, I'll be ready for some opportunities to uh, to grow. And uh, you know, maybe there's going to be some equipment coming up on auction that I can uh, uh, benefit from, bring it in, add some add to some of our capabilities, and um, you know the value to our customers, which is uh, uh, you know, ultimately the goal here, right? So anyway, that's kind of the uh, little on-location site here. You can see my camera is kind of following me. Shout out to the Chicago Bears as well. Anyway, um, another thing I wanted to chat with today is I wanted to uh, bring some value in the respect to uh, follow-up and um, really just uh, returning phone calls, returning text messages. Uh, I've had a handful of experiences lately and I don't know I set my maybe I set myself up to a uh, to a very very high standard and you know I get myself in trouble because I expect the, the same from others but um, you know not not returning phone calls not returning texts timely manner uh, that kind of thing it's it's just such poor business I can't believe it I don't know it, it just it still sometimes shocks me today how some people are in business who do not return phone calls, return text messages or emails in any sort of timely manner. Uh, a lot of people are busy, a lot of things going on, um, a lot of stuff on people's plates. However, uh, communication today is so easy and so simple and, and, and so available that there's really no excuse. And um, it kind of paints a bad picture in my opinion to people who can't, who cannot, uh, do the simplest things as far as uh, returning phone calls and text messages. So I don't know. I pride myself on communication. I, I that's one of the things that I sell uh, as one of my value propositions. Is when you deal with me, you are going to be uh, uh, communicated with at the highest level and um, almost over communicating. I don't. I think over communicating is not a bad thing. Uh, everybody needs to know where they stand. Uh, if you've got a part on the floor that needs to get done, and you're waiting for uh, you know you're waiting for an answer on something, or your customer's waiting on you, or you're waiting on, a, on an outside operation and nobody's getting back to you, very very frustrating. It makes everybody look bad. Um, you know, I try to do my do my best, and it, listen, it sometimes gets me in trouble, but I think honesty is the best policy when it comes down to it. And in the long run, in the long game, people respect you for it. And uh, if they know they're dealing with a straight shooter and they're getting straight answers up front, uh, they're going to be more willing to, uh, to work with you in the future. I strongly, strongly believe that. And, um, you know, that goes, to, that goes also when you're dealing with buyers and sellers and other agents. You know, other agents, these are, these are our uh, paisan out there. You know, we got to all work together and support each other. You know, if an agent calls me, I'm going to call them back or, or text them back as soon as possible. Um, and make sure that I can be a resource to, resource to them in any way, shape, or form. If a buyer calls a sign, I'm gonna call that guy back, that girl back. If a, uh, you know, if the seller needs something, you gotta be on top of your game at all times. And, and if you're overwhelmed and overworked and don't have time, get help. That's all there is to it, you gotta get help. 
and you got to do the things that are most important so that the uh, the other things that are keeping you from that can be delegated out. Um, it's not easy. It's definitely not easy, but it's got to be done. You know, I struggle with it every day. I, uh, I sometimes take on too much. I take on things that maybe I shouldn't, I should delegate to, but, um, you know, that's kind of my personality, and, you know, it gets me in trouble sometimes. I'm honest, there I am, you know, I said it. But, um, you know, that's something that I'm working on. But uh, if there's one thing that I will never fall behind on is getting back to somebody and communicating because I think that that's the cornerstone of success to sales, uh, sales one-on-one. So, um, you know, that's my little tip for the day. I hope everybody has a great weekend, and um, we'll see you on Monday.